All right, in this video here, I'm going to be discussing what happens when you take weak acid HN3, 20 mils of a 0.2 molar solution, and we're gonna add to it 50 mils of a 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. This is along a titration curve, and we're gonna determine if we're before the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, after the equivalence point on this titration. So first, it's important to note that you have strong base. Whenever you have either a strong base or a strong acid being added to anything else, it is going to be a reaction, not an equilibrium. When it's a reaction, you want an IC final table. IC final tables focus on the number of moles. So let's first determine the number of moles of our weak acid, HN3. We have 20 milliliters, and there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And for every one liter, we have 0 0.2 moles of that weak acid HN3. That means our total number of moles is 0 0.004. Now let's figure out the number of moles of our sodium hydroxide. We have 50 milliliters of the solution. For every 1,000 milliliters, there's a liter and for every one liter, there's 0 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide. That gives us a number of moles of 0 0.005. And I'm going to just write it as hydroxide ion. The sodium really is a spectator. It doesn't affect the pH just kind of hangs out, and so to simplify things, I'm just going to ignore the spectator ion of sodium, so I'm just going to focus on the hydroxide. So now if we look at these two things, it becomes clear that we have an excess of strong base hydroxide. This is after the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, our moles of acid is, are equal to our moles of base. Here we have more base. We are after the equivalence point. Let's set up the IC final table to determine what the pH ultimately is. So in an IC final table, you have a reaction between weak acid and strong base. Let's predict the products from this. The base pulls the proton off of the acid. The acid donates its proton to the base. So when hydroxide pulls off the proton, you form water. And what's left over is the conjugate base of HN3 and 3 minus. So our initial number of moles in this IC final reaction table, our initial moles 0 0.004, and our initial moles of hydroxide 0 0.05. We don't really care about water. It doesn't affect the pH, um, so we don't really care what's going on with it. And initially, we have 0 moles of N3 minus. Now the change for an IC final table is you look at this in terms of stoichiometry. Which one is the limiting reagent and which one is an excess? The limiting reagent in this case is HN3. We only have 0.004 moles of that. That is going to be completely consumed by the excess base, 0.005 moles of hydroxide. So we're going to lose 0.004 moles of the HN3 and we're going to lose 0.004 moles of the hydroxide, we're going to gain 0.004 moles of the N3. So that means final, we have zero moles of weak acid HN3. We have 0.001 moles of hydroxide, and we have 0.004 moles of N3. Let's talk about our final molarity. Remember, molarity is moles per liter. So we have to determine the total amount of solution we have. We have 70 milliliters of solution, 20 mils from the acid, 50 mils from the base. So that means that we have 70 milliliters total. That means that we have 0 0.07 liters total solution. So the final molarity is gonna be moles per liter, 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.07. 0.004 also divided by 0.07. So the final number of moles of the HN3 is zero. We have none of that. The final concentration of hydroxide is 0.0143. 
and the final concentration of N3 minus is 0 0.057. Now, let's take a step back and look and see what we have and what's going to govern our pH. This is not a buffer. It's not a buffer because a buffer is made up of an acid-base conjugate pair. The acid-base conjugate pair we have here is HN3 and N3 minus, and we have no HN3. It is not a buffer. But what is it? It's a base. We have excess strong base hydroxide. Excess strong base hydroxide is going to govern our pH. We have a little bit of weak base, N3 minus, but this is not going to change our pH nearly as much as our hydroxide is going to. So we know what the concentration of our hydroxide is. It is 0 0.0143 molar. From that, we can determine the pOH. The pOH is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. So that means that it's the negative log of 0 0.0143. That means that our pOH equals 1.84. And the pH is 14 minus the pOH, giving us a pH of 12.16. And this makes sense. We're after the equivalence point. We have excess strong base. The strong base is going to make our pH relatively high. So a pH of 12.16 makes sense.